how the pressure builds, the yield curve, the relationship between short and long rates steepened fast after a long inversion. The Fed cut once in September 17th, while core inflation still sat above target. That mix doesn't appear in soft landings. It appears when policy trade-offs turn hard, so look at what that signals. When short rates fall faster than long rates while hiring calls, markets aren't pricing calm, they're pricing fragility. In 1989, the curve flipped, then recession followed. In 2007, spreads looked quiet in spring. By August, funding snapped. The pattern showed up early. The mechanism works like this. Cheap pandemic era debt carried low coupon the fixed interest rate on a bond. Much of it must roll refinance old debt with new debt by mid-decade. 2% paper from 2021 meets 4 plus percent funding by 2026. Interest costs rise. Cash flows thin, investment slows. That arithmetic doesn't blink. The constraint is simple. Treasury issuance must fund a large fiscal deficit when government spends more than it collects. While the Fed manages inflation with monetary policy. How central banks set rates and money. When both push in opposite directions, markets price stress. Follow the money, find the pressure. What happens next? Follow the money. Primary dealers, the banks required to bid at treasury auctions. Warehouse more duration, when investors balk. Auction tail, when demand is weak shows up as a price gap at issuance. Term premium, the extra yield investors demand for long bonds rises when confidence thins. Dealers absorb, then pass risk back through price. The result? Funding costs climb even when policy eases. Check this contradiction. Equity benchmarks can rise on a narrow group of winners while credit quietly tightens. That's not broad strength. That's concentrated leadership masking liquidity strain. The pattern emerged in 1999 and again in 2021. Breadth narrowed first. Funding stress arrived later. Look at what happened after the pandemic surge. Balance sheet runoff. When the Fed lets bonds mature without replacing them drained reserves. Real yield at the interest rate minus inflation rose above 1.5% on long treasuries. Companies that borrowed at 2% now refinance closer to 4 or 5. That spread the gap between two interest rates, decides margins more than any headline. So far, policy pulled cash from the pipes while rollover costs rose. Coming up, when the maturity wall turns arithmetic into action, now the pressure builds at the wall. Maturity wall. When lots of debt comes due at once peaks into 2026 and 2027 for both corporates and the sovereign. The Treasury's interest bill approached 1 trillion on a run rate basis. That sum now rivals or exceeds defence outlays in several projections. Scale matters here. The mechanism works like this. Interest costs crowd out other spending. The longer the extra term premium lingers, the larger the crowding. Private borrowers face the same math. Investment plans get delayed. Hiring slows. Inventories stick. Then losses get recognised. That's when things shift. Watch the timing. In prior cycles, the labour data revised before the recession call. In 2001, payrolls looked stable in spring. Revisions later erased the comfort. In 2020, the shock was faster, but the pattern still held. Institutions felt the turn first, headlines later. The signal appeared early. Warning sign one in 60 seconds. Long bond term, premium staying elevated into refunding season. The numbers proved the system tilt. The federal deficit ran near 1.8 trillion on recent prints. Net issuance packed the front of each quarter. Foreign exchange reserves dollars and other currencies held by central banks rotated. Some sovereign wealth funds, government investment pools, rebalanced from long treasuries to bills. They sought flexibility, not yield. The math shows the incentive. Notice the gap. Bills trade close to policy rate. Long bonds trade with term premium added. If investors demand more pay for time, the Treasury either shortens the mix, paying more often, or pays more per year to go long. Neither is free. Follow the money, find the pressure. So far, issuance stayed heavy while preferred demand slid to bills. Coming up, which players matter most when stress rises? Follow the money to the core players. The Federal Reserve sets the short anchor. The US Treasury sets the calendar and the mix. Primary dealers connect both to markets. The European Central Bank calibrates spillovers. The People's Bank of China controls domestic liquidity and affects global dollar demand. Japan's Ministry of Finance intervenes when yen swings too wide. These desks don't tweet. They move size. 
the constraint is visible in the plumbing. Treasury plans refunding four times a year. When tails widen, the desk adjusts sizes by tenor. When bills swell too large, rollover risk grows. When long issuance grows, term premium can lift further before it falls. That loop can feed on itself. Check the timing on policy. If inflation cools but stays above two, the Fed cuts slowly. Cuts reduce front-end yields. If long yields fall slower because of supply and term premium, the curve steepens bearishly at first, then bull steepens. In both cases, steepening after inversion has preceded contractions more often than not since the 1970s. What changed? History shows a pattern around election cycles and policy pivots. In 1974, energy shock plus fiscal constraint produced stagflation. In 2008, housing leverage met a funding squeeze. Today's setup is different, but rhymes. Large public deficits, large refinancing needs, rising defence demand, and a global investment boom in energy transition and computing. Each fights for capital. Prices decide who gets starved. Now the pressure builds in geopolitics. Trade taxes lift input prices. Supply chains split. Friends-only lanes replace global lanes. That creates parallel systems. It also creates duplication. Duplication costs money before it pays off. Spread the lens beyond the US, and the picture is the same. Europe faces energy investment gaps. China faces property deleveraging. Japan manages yield curve control. Global savings meet global needs at higher clearing prices. The result? Real yields stay firm even as growth slows. That's the dangerous mix. It tightens financial conditions without a headline hike. So far, historical parallels linked steepening curves to slowdowns. Coming up, the countdown that decides 2027 versus 2028. Watch what happens next. Three forces collide into the window. First, the refinancing wave into 2026 and 2027. Second, the fiscal path and interest carry into 2027 budgets. Third, the global capex race in chips, grids, and defense. None yield quietly. Follow the money, find the pressure. The mechanism is simple. If refunding comes soft, long yields jump. If CPI runs sticky, the Fed cannot cut fast. If private credit losses rise, banks tighten further. The crossover point lands when public and private borrowers both reach for the same dollars at once. That's when small cracks, big breaks. The pattern showed up early in the micro data. Freight costs eased, then stalled. Delinquencies in certain consumer and small business buckets rose off the floor. Commercial real estate refinancing struggled where rates reset sharply. None alone cause a recession. Together, they tip marginal decisions. Margins rule at the edge. That's the setup. But what triggers the break? Check this contradiction. Markets price soft landing, while term premium stays stubborn. If landing is soft, term premium should retreat on confidence. If premium refuses, it signals structural supply, not panic. That means pressure persists under the surface. The math doesn't lie. Now the calendar matters. Three dates decide the next move. January 31st, 2026, for the Treasury's winter refunding announcement. February 13th, 2026 for CPI. March 18th, 2026 for the Fed's policy decision. Those prints steer issuance mix, inflation path, and policy speed. Together they set the slope. If the January refunding tilts longer and tails widen, the yield spike won't be the last. If February CPI sits above three, the next cut slows. If March brings slower growth signals and wobbly auctions, banks tighten more. This is where it gets critical. So far, the countdown put issuance, inflation, and policy on one track. Coming up, the player's playbook when stress flips to action. Follow the money into playbooks. Treasury can lean into bills to ease long supply. That lowers term premium but raises rollover risk. The Fed can slow balance sheet runoff to add reserves. That supports liquidity but risks inflation optics. Primary dealers can raise balance sheet capacity. That carries VAR risk of loss on price swings into calmer periods. Every move shifts pressure, not erases it. The mechanism works like this. If treasury shortens, bill supply jumps. Money market funds absorb at near policy rate. If the Fed slows runoff, reserves rise. Funding spreads narrow and tails shrink. If neither happens and deficits stay high, investors demand more compensation for time. Term premium stays up. The result? Growth meets higher real funding costs longer. Who's on the other side of the trade? Sovereign wealth funds prefer flexibility after volatile years. 
pension funds rebalance on yield thresholds, but many hedged rates earlier and now face basis choices. Insurers match cash flows but watch duration mismatches carefully. Foreign central banks adjust reserves to domestic needs first. None exist to bail out issuance. They exist to meet mandates. Notice the contradiction in equity comfort. Profits concentrated in a few sectors can mask broad margin pressure from funding costs. That was true in 1998. It was true again in 2023. Leadership helps indexes. Funding costs decide investment and hiring in the median firm. The broader economy listens to the median. So far, balance sheet choices shuffle pressure among desks. Coming up, the three warning signs and how to track them in real time. Watch this next part. Three warning signs separate soft landing from hard stop. First, long bond term, premium staying high through two consecutive refundings. Translation, investors still demand extra pay for time, despite policy relief. Second, widening tails at seven Tamiga, how to 10 could be current and so seven or 30 year auctions for two months. Translation, weak demand stretches pricing power. Third, rising real yields while growth data cool. Translation financing tightens into slowdown. Those three together are the red zone. Warning sign two in two minutes. A second month of long tenor auction tails with heavy dealer takedowns. Now step back and place the 2027 to 2028 window. The maturity wall crests. Fiscal interest carry compounds. Global capex keeps competing for capital. The arithmetic nudges the economy toward a break sometime in that span. Timing's conditional, not fated. Policy choices can shift the slope, but not erase the hill. What happens if policy blinks? If Treasury leans short and the Fed supplies reserves at stress points, the break can delay. The cost shows up later as rollover stacks and inflation risk if relief runs too long. If policymakers stay tight to chase target inflation quickly, the break can arrive sooner, but maybe shallower. Trade-offs are blunt instruments. Check the timing on the global side. If China's property repair drags, export prices may ease but dollar strength tightens global liquidity. If Europe accelerates energy investment with fiscal support, crowding raises rates regionally and spills over. If Japan adjusts yield curve control again, global term premium can lift. International desks add noise and pressure. So far, cross-border dynamics raise the floor under long yields. Coming up, the mid-script payoff and the cliffhanger that frames the window. Watch what happens next. If the January 31st refunding lifts long issuance while CPI on February 13th prints hot, the March 18th policy path tightens by an action. If that sequence lands, the snap seen this quarter won't be the last. Three dates, one story. January 31st, February 13th, March 18th. Now translate the technicals into plain sight trackers. Term, premium. The extra yield for long bonds can be inferred from long, minus expected short rates. Real yield, the rate minus. Inflation sits in tips pricing. Auction tail, when demand is weak, shows up as the stop price over the when issued level. These aren't exotic. They're the scoreboard. The mechanism is still arithmetic. Rollover happens at the market rate, not the wish rate. If the average coupon, the fixed interest rate, on the public debt rises by one point across a large base, the interest bill rises by tens of billions per year. That crowds out other choices. Budgets bend, then break. So far, the scoreboard explains itself in simple terms. Coming up, the closing framework and the three-line dashboard to keep handy. The result? A path that points to a breaking point window rather than a single day. History rarely picks a calendar square in advance. It picks a setup. This is the setup. Follow the money, find the pressure. The three-line dashboard. Term premium. Elevated across two refundings with no sustained retreat. Auction health repeated long tenor tails and heavy dealer takedowns. Real yields rising while growth and profits cool across the median firm. Scorecard before we close. Auctions, firm or soft. Real yields rising or falling. Central bank flows, adding or pausing. Economists predict a window, not an hour. The signal showed up early. Small cracks, big breaks. 